now that we have the template, we're gonna take the next hour or so, maybe less, to look at a real case, a real case study, okay? And I'm going to share my screen, all right? Let me know if you guys can see all of this information this way. We're gonna go like this. Yeah, nice and big, right? Can you guys see this nice and well? All right, so here is a situation of a husband and wife. This couple is a kingdom citizen in my kingdom. I'm not sure if they are kingdom citizens in the king, dumb, domain, right? Not sure yet, I forgot. But I do know that they are a kingdom citizen in my kingdom. So the way we operate in my kingdom is we must know our four major numbers, okay? And to give a little background about this couple, a husband and wife, wife is 56 years old, husband is 51 years old, out of Philadelphia area, they have a business, a flooring company. They've been incorporated for many years now. Um, they have some kingdom certifications in the American government, the United States of America. They have an MBE, stands for Minority Business Enterprise. They have a WBE, stands for Women Business Enterprise. Okay, so they have some certifications. They are a business owner. They are operating quite effectively. Now they want to take it to the next level. Okay, so in my kingdom, I have a process. You must know your four major numbers. So that is what this king and queen provided to me. Here are the four major numbers. They are currently making 11,000 a month from their business. They pay themselves a salary. So they're bringing in $11,000 a month. Their expenses are $7,000 a month. Personally, they have a total personal debt of $79,677.64. Their cash flow, their net conservative monthly cash flow is $4,000. They have savings, $7,600. They have an emergency fund of $1,000. They have something called sinking funds. If you do not know what a sinking fund is, um, and I didn't know this either. I mean, I, I don't practice this, but it's, uh, you, you, you basically create a separate account for particular annual expenses that typically fluctuate. You know, maybe like a car insurance, homeowner's insurance, escrow, uh, maybe taxes, um, water and light, quarterly bills. So usually annual bills, right? Uh, and so they have $400 a month that goes into sinking funds. The $400 comes from the 7K, not the 4,000 cash flow. Okay, the $4,000 cash flow is free cash flow money that doesn't go anywhere. Okay. They also have retirement accounts. They're contributing $500 a month towards their retirement accounts. Again, the 500 comes out of the 11,000 their income, okay? So they're still spending seven grand, it's coming out of that, right? Not the 4,000 cash flow. They also have a personal unsecured revolving line of credit for $15,000 at a 13% interest rate. Right? This interest rate is calculated simple interest daily, which means that whatever I take out of this particular personal line of credit, I only get charged interest at a daily rate based on whatever I owe for however many days I owe it. That number will stay the same. So if I take out 10 grand at 13%, I will pay a daily rate on 10 grand for however long I owe 10 grand for and that interest daily rate stays the same. It does not compound. The number amount stays the same. Okay, that's how that interest is being calculated. The goals for this kingdom citizen, they want to pay off debt. They want to buy a house in the Bahamas. I believe they have land already. I think they just need to build, I forget. Uh, they want to build their business up. They want to 10X it. And they want to live kingdom life, kingdom living. According to Miles Monroe, the kingdom of heaven, or I should say God himself, uh, lives, in, lives in the Bahamas. And uh, 
you know, I wouldn't argue against that. I've been to the Bahamas. It is quite a beautiful territory. Um, so it's just a funny joke that Miles Monroe, I think, said often in his videos that God vacations or lives in the Bahamas. I forget which one it is. Probably vacation. I forget. <laughs> but it's pretty funny. Anyways, um, let's break down the debts. So they have a care credit debt, $5,000 owed. The interest rate is 26.99%. The monthly payment is $500. The monthly minimum payment is $100, right? They are paying an extra $400 a month out of the seven grand, okay? So not the 4,000 cash flow. Just wanna be clear on that. They got a car loan, $30,000, $409.32, 5.14% amortized, monthly payment, $584.97. The total amount of interest left on this vehicle is $4,103.91. So that's actually a lot more than 5.14%. This is how amortization works. It's compounded. The number continues to compound on the whole entire amount during the duration of the loan. This was originally a 72 month loan. There's 59 payments left on this debt. They also have a student loan, $20,000 at a 4.75% interest rate. Monthly payment, $150, okay? And that's also amortized. And then they also have a federal loan $24,268.32. It is at 0% currently till December of 2020. So we still have a few months left. The monthly payment, $629.92. And that is principal, right? All going towards principal for a temporary period of time for September, October, November, December. We are, we're recording this video on September 24th. So that is how we're operating. So now let's go into the concept of paying off debt extremely fast in the 21st century. So, so far, we talked about the kingdom, the kingdom template, how to operate in it. If all I did was, a, was apply that template and then I receive knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, I surround myself with other kings, I'll be able to learn these concepts, these financial concepts, so that I can operate effectively in the United States, right? So one of those concepts go by the name of velocity banking, debt acceleration, mortgage acceleration, paycheck parking, a lot of different names, a lot of different terminology, just like God himself comes in a lot of different names, right? A lot of different terminology. The reason for that is God sometimes comes in different forms for certain people. So today, God is coming to us as the God of money. And there's a word for that. I forget what it is. But, you know, Elohim, Jehovah, Jireh, Jehovah, Yeshua, God the Father, God Almighty. He, all these different names have different meanings. Yes? So it works the same way with these different concepts that I'm going to present to you. So a couple of things we need to break down is we have to make sense of borrowing money, borrowing debt to pay debt. We must mathematically make sense of that. If we do not, then we are doing an ineffective strategy, okay? So our P-lock is our debt tool. Another word for it used by the famous Matthew Pilmore debt weapon. Okay, but we're going to say debt tool for this. Okay, so personal line of credit, 15K, 13%. This is our debt tool. When we're looking at our four major numbers, a simple rule that I have when I'm going to incorporate this concept is the 66% rule, which simply means that I do not borrow more than 66% of what my total credit limit is. So, 15,000 times 66% is 
$900. This is my starting chunk number for this particular case. Based on the four major numbers, I got four grand in cash flow, very good income. The least I should do is 9,900. Now, there is going to be a time where there are exceptions to the rule. This works the same way in the kingdom, right? If I committed sins and crimes against my government, he will create an exception to still grant me resources in his kingdom as long as I surrender, ask for forgiveness truly from the heart and repent, which means to change my way of thinking. So that's what we're doing when it comes to our finances. We're repenting. We're changing our way of thinking. We are trying to operate like kings and queens in the United States of America, right? So one exception to the rule is when the person has high income, high cash flow, uh, you know, assets, capital, cash flow, cash on hand, right? So being that this is the first time they're implementing velocity banking, the chunk amount I decided to go up a little bit is say $12,000. Okay, so the first chunk is 12,000. Why 12,000? 12,000 is a little bit more aggressive than the 66% rule, right? I'm violating the rule on purpose because of their four major numbers, but I'm also not maxing out the credit line. I do not want to ever max out the credit line uh, unless my line of credit is equal to the amount of cash flow that I have. So let's say I had a $15,000 line of credit and my cash flow is $15,000. That line of credit, I, I would give myself access to chunk the whole entire amount. So that would be an exception to that rule. But in many places that does not happen because we typically like to increase our credit lines every you know, four to six months, you know, sometimes as early as three months. It just depends on your situation. Okay. So... Moving along, 12,000, safe, aggressive, conservative chunk, right? 12,000 times 13% equals $1,560, okay? The way you calculate simple interest, I just want to make sure everything's working here. Audio is good, guys. Just want to make sure. Just double checking in. Audio is solid as you're listening to me. All right, so 12,000 times 13% equals $1,560. You divide that number by 365 days, you get $4.27. Times that number by 30 days, your estimated borrowing cost is going to be $128.21 for however long, right? For however long I owe $12,000. So, ladies and gentlemen, the first step of this concept is shifting one debt to another location to reduce my borrowing cost. I want to reduce this $128.21 as low as humanly possible. How do we do that? Okay. So we look at the debts. They got four. Well, I can tell you right off the bat, the... Fed loan, right? We don't want that. It's at 0%. So we're going to ignore it. There's no need to tackle a debt if it's at 0%. The next debt I'm going to ignore is the student loan. Why? The payment is so low compared to the amount of debt owed. Right? So right here, care credit is the most attractive debt to go after. Why? It's the smallest and the highest interest rate, 26.99. And it's the highest amount of cash flow that I can gain today, today. Now, the next uh, most attractive loan is the car loan, right? High monthly payment, high cash flow, amortized. We're still in the early stages of this amortization loan. If I was at the ending stages of this loan, it may not have been so attractive to go after. Okay, it just depends. But with these two debts, these are the ones that we're looking at. So what I told 
my kingdom citizen was, hey, you take 12,000, you make a withdrawal, right? So step one, I withdraw money out of line of credit. We're gonna put this in plain English so you guys can really truly get this. So withdraw money out of line of credit. Step two, money hits the checking account. Ideally, you wanna have your line of credit and your checking account in one location. You wanna have all your income in one bank, one location. It makes it very easy, it makes the process very, very convenient, easy, helps you maximize, uh, minimize on your borrowing costs. So step three, I make a lump sum payment to the debts. Which debts? Care credit, we're paying it off. Car, the difference from 12,005 is 7,000. So we're gonna do a 7,000 principal only payment to the vehicle, which brings 30,409.32 down to 23,409.32. So let me ask you a question. Regarding this interest here, the 4,103.91, this is how much interest is left on the vehicle according to the payment schedule. Beings that is an amortized loan, that 4,103.91 is going to show up in the beginning years of the debt. So the faster I pay on the amortized, the more interest I save. So if I make a $7,000 payment on 30 grand, that's more than 20%, right? That's about maybe 23% I'm paying off on the loan, right? If I remove 23% principal on that vehicle, you and I can both agree that we remove more than 23% of 4,103.91. Probably a good 30% gets removed off that loan. So 4,103.91 times 30% is over a thousand bucks. So we're saving over a thousand plus dollars, probably in the neighborhood of thirteen, fourteen hundred dollars of interest, easily from that seven thousand. Looking at care credit, we're removing five thousand of principal, twenty six point nine nine. We're redirecting it to thirteen percent. So that is called debt consolidation. There's no argument there. Anyone can agree on that point. Moving twenty six point nine nine to thirteen percent is a no-brainer. Plus you get a $500 gain from it that you would apply towards the 13%. So you're not actually paying 13%. We're paying in the neighborhood of probably one to 3% interest. And then when we break down the math even further, you're going to see that we actually have zero borrowing cost. okay? So the first chunk has been executed, $12,000, wonderful. Now, what happened, ladies and gentlemen? I still owe 12,000 on the P-lock, right? No argument there. So, step four, dump all income into the line of credit. So I owe 12, I put 11 in, which brings the balance down to 1,000. The best time for this person to make a chunk payment is most likely going to be on the day that they get paid as a family, as a whole, which for most people is typically at the beginning of the end of the month, typically. Beginning of the end of the month is typically when you're gonna make that chunk payment. Chunk payment is another word for lump sum, just different terminology, okay? So dump all income into the line of credit. So we could say that 12,000 owed, I'm getting charged $4.27 a day. Well, if I only owe 1K on the line of credit for a period of time, let's say it's, I don't know, a couple days or maybe one day or whatever it is, uh, 1,000 times 13% divided by 365, the daily cost is 35 cents, okay? so. Step five, 
expenses come out of the line of credit back to the checking account because the checking account pays your bills. Now, to add more velocity to the equation, we use a credit card with cash back rewards. This particular client, this particular kingdom citizen spends about $4,500 on a credit card each and every month and they're getting 1.5% cash back on $4,500. So conservatively, let's just say 4,000. 4,000 times 1.5% is $60, ladies and gentlemen. Every single month, this couple is receiving an average of probably $60 in cash back rewards, okay? So jot that down, don't forget that. Step six, before I take out money out of my line of credit, I use my credit card to swipe those bills that can be paid with a credit card first right, before I take it out of the line of credit. The reason for that is to keep, right, keep as much money as possible sitting in the line of credit. We have repurposed the line of credit for a checking account now. The line of credit is functioning like a checking account. Pretty solid, right? So step seven. Any bill that cannot be paid with a credit card, you will make a transfer, a withdrawal from the line of credit to the checking account. Checking account pays cash bills. So every three to five days on average, you will withdraw what you need when you need it, right? As you need it. Pretty simple, right? Why? Well, we don't want to overdraft on our checking account because a lot of us have auto pay set up. So to avoid that, I pull out money to last roughly five days, no more than five days, right? So you evaluate all of your bills, all of your expenses, when money goes out, when money comes in, right? And you operate. You pay into the line of credit the day you get paid. Right? So step eight, as you get paid, dump into line of credit first before paying anything. Okay? So what happens is when expenses come out, their expenses are now 6500 So new expense number is 6500 because they're no longer paying for care credit nor do they have a monthly payment on the line of credit why do they not have a payment on the line of credit because your income was the payment so therefore no payment even shows up you prevented the line of credit from accruing interest on your income 100 percent of your income goes to principal on the line of credit we can reuse that money again to pay bills. So that means 100% of my cash flow is actually paying down the debt, which puts me light years ahead of debt snowball. Yes? Of the traditional way of paying off debt. Uh, and this is simple. This is not getting into investing. You know, I'm all for investing and, you know, uh, um, instead of paying off debt, investing. But this particular couple wants to do it this way. So according to the petition that my kingdom citizens present to the king myself, right, because I'm a king, they're coming into my kingdom domain, my territory, to receive wisdom and knowledge so that they can execute the goals that they want for their finances. And then I report back to my king, who's the king of kings, I report back to him to notify him of how his citizens are operating in my kingdom. And then I declare that this whole entire kingdom is yours, Lord, so your will be done here on earth as it is in heaven. Give us 
the responsibility, Lord. Give me the responsibility to manage my kingdom citizens effectively and give them the authentic information, truth in the money so they can operate. So new expenses, $6,500 comes out of the line of credit over a 30-day period. Yes, not all at once, ladies and gentlemen, over a 30-day period. So what that means is 12K came out, 11 went in, 65 came out. So one, so 12,000 minus 11,000 plus 6,500, the balance is 7,500. So by the end of the month, balance on line of credit, $7,500, right? So you do it, the math again. 7,500 times 13% divided by 365. Daily cost on however long I owe $7,500 is $2.67, okay? So now we have three distinct numbers. We've got 427, we got 35 cents, we got $2.67. So, we have to get the median number now. Add the three up. If you add the three, divide by three, you're gonna get $2.43 a day. Here is a good way to calculate our average borrowing costs. So average borrowing cost is now $2.43 a day times 30 days equals $72.91. All right, so $72.91. So we went from what? We went from 128, now we're down to 72.91. Remember that credit card I mentioned about? $60 on average, could be more, really no less. Well, $72 minus 60 bucks, right? Let me make sure I did my math, my math right. $2.43 times 30 days. Yep, $72 minus 60 bucks, $12.91. Whoa, whoa, whoa. So we're, we're down to $12.91 in the first month of doing Velocity Banking is my total borrowing cost. Which would you rather pay? $12.91 or making extra payments of $4,000, right? So you would make an extra $4,000 payment towards care credit if you were doing debt snowball. You don't pay off the, the card, by the way, in the first month. It's gonna take you two months. You pay 584, again, towards the vehicle. From that 584, how much is that in interest? I can guarantee you it's more than a hundred bucks. So which would you rather pay, right? So now to make this even sweeter, remember how I said that by paying down the vehicle seven grand, we save over a hundred dollars, over a thousand plus dollars in interest. Well, guess what? That twelve dollars and ninety-one cents, it didn't come from anywhere other than the existing debt that I shifted. Because I didn't reduce my debt when I when I initially took out twelve thousand out of line of credit, put it on the vehicle. I shifted seven thousand and five thousand to twelve thousand. I still owe the same amount of money, right? I still owe this amount seventy nine thousand six seventy seven sixty four. The difference is I no longer get charged interest, and the ability for me to pay down principal goes faster. So now that we've made sense of shifting 5.14% to 13%, which in reality is now zero cost. Because if I saved, say, $1,300 on interest on the vehicle day one, we'll just do $1,300 minus $12.91. Your net interest savings is $1,200 and some change. Does that make sense? 
right? Comment below, be like, yeah, this is solid. Or if you're confused, you're gonna have to definitely watch this video three, four, five times over, okay? Because it'll, it'll really, really help you. So let this be the basis for how you develop your numbers. So if I have no borrowing cost the first month, ladies and gentlemen, what do you think the next month's cost is gonna be? It's gonna be zero as well, but in, but in this case, we're actually gonna be earning money because I'm gonna to continue to use that credit card and get $60. So that's gonna help me pay down the debt even faster, right? And we are just, I mean, making strides, okay? We are, we are going fast. So this should take this gentleman no more, husband and wife, no more by the end of this year, 2020, by December or sooner, by the end of December or sooner, the line of credit hits zero, right? So by December or sooner, line of credit hits zero, which allows me to make the next chunk, right? So the next chunk, we would evaluate. We say, okay, what do we, what do we tackle now, right? Come December, that Fed loan, right? I'm still gonna ignore the student loan. It's not worth going after. The Fed loan is paid for November, October, November, December. So three months, three months times 629.92 is 1,889.76. So 24,268.32 minus 1,889.76, right? Let me just verify my numbers. 24,268.32 minus 1,889.76. The balance goes down to 22,378. 56. The interest rate, I think, is going to jump to 3% if I'm not mistaken. So we've got that. That'll kick in. The car loan, same thing. October, November, December. I'm still paying the same amount. 584.97 times 3 is 17.54. So we're at 23.409 after making the chunk minus 1,754.91 of payments. So we could say, when you, when you factor in interest, now remember that 584.97, now that you've paid uh, a big lump sum payment, more of that 584.97 is principal, principal, right? So, 23,409.32 minus 17,54.91. Okay, we're down to 21,000, say, 900, just to be conservative. The number was 21,654.41. 21,900 is the about balance. If my line of credit is at zero, we're going to follow the same chunking amount you know, 12K, which is over 50% of what the car loan balance is. So we're not going to go after the Fed loan because it's, it's too high, right? The car loan is more attractive, being that when I hit it again, I'm going to damn near wipe out all the interest on it. So 12000 can stick to the same number, second chunk, come December 2020. By the end of December, maybe sooner, worst case scenario, January. But really, I should be done by December. So I make that 12K chunk, right? 21,900 minus 12,000. Balance on car drops to $9,900. Ladies and gentlemen, there comes a point where once you've paid a majority of an amortization loan at the beginning of its lifespan, 
you you basically remove all the interest and you'll have straight principal pretty much on that particular loan. So 9900 I save another, you know, 40% of what's or 50% or more, definitely more of what's left of that 4103 from earlier, that total amount of interest. Again, that is my cushion for whatever we pay on the line of credit. So to recap, the first chunk was 12,000. Let's scroll back up because I know this is tough. This is a lot. Recap, recap. Step one, withdraw money out of the line of credit on the day I get paid, preferably. Money hits the checking account. Step two, I make a lump sum payment to the debts that I determine are the best way forward, right? 5K pays off car care credit, cash flow goes up 500 bucks, 7K towards the car loan, brings the balance to 2340932. Okay, I now owe 12,000 on the P-Lock. Step four, dump all my income. Same day I took the money out, I'm putting the money back in. Same day. Dump all money into the line of credit. Same day I put all the money into the line of credit, I'm taking it back out. Expenses come out of the line of credit. I'm using the credit card and the line of credit to facilitate this concept. I'm getting cash back rewards, which is helping reduce my borrowing costs to zero. Step six, I keep as much money as possible sitting in the line of credit. We have repurposed the line of credit as a checking account now. It's where money gets held. Step seven, every three to five days on average, I'll withdraw what you need, when you need it, as you need it. Okay? Don't get it confused. Step eight, as you get paid, dump it first into the line of credit before paying anything. Then you take the money out, you pay your bills. The expenses have now dropped to 6,500, which is also reducing my borrowing costs on the line of credits, less money that needs to come out. We've determined that our average borrowing cost was originally as high as 128, but we got it all the way down to $12.91. Okay, this is mathematics. You cannot argue against it, okay? Cannot argue against this. Here it is, plain, sweet, and simple. Baby, right? <laughs> All right, so, and then when you factor in the amount of interest that I saved up front as opposed to doing extra payments, we're also ahead in that fashion as well, which brings it to zero, zero net interest savings is somewhere around this number, not including what I saved on care credit, because that's a benefit as well. And so for the month of October, November, December, I do the same thing. Money goes in, money comes out, money goes in, money comes out, money goes in, money comes out. Soon as I hit zero on the line of credit, you have paid it off. You may have expenses left a little bit, but if you're using the credit card, you don't have to pull money out of the line of credit anymore. Basically, what we're doing is we're weaning ourselves off of the line of credit after we make that chunk so that we can rep reposition for the next chunk. December, I do another lump sum payment, take money out. I repeat the steps all over again, except now I'm directing the full 12000 at the vehicle. Car loan drops down to $9,900. Principal, left. Still paying five eighty four ninety seven dollars a month. Nothing changed there, right? Still using my credit card to run bills. Now, key thing, key, 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 right? Key principle here in this concept. We want to upgrade our line of credit. That 13% line of credit is going to become less effective on these very low amortized loans. 3% is quite low on the Fed loan. So this couple, they do very well for themselves. They have a business. They're generating $4 million a year, roughly, okay? Flooring company out of Philadelphia. They're killing it, okay, on the business side. They're just trying to get their personal right, okay? Because once they get their personal, then the business just keeps functioning even better, and they're able to spend less time, work smarter instead of harder, right? So key thing here is we want to upgrade our line of credit from a 13% and, you know, try to bring it down to like six to nine, 
right? Whatever it is, whatever we can get. I also want to increase my credit limit so I can cause more damage to my debt. Does that make sense? So I don't want to stay with that P-lock forever because it is a high interest rate, 13%, no doubt about it. We made the best use of it, but we want to improve that. We want to make it better. Obviously, if they get rid of majority of the car loan, they got rid of the credit card, oh, we're definitely going to remove, uh, increase our credit score dramatically over the next few months. So the goal is after the second chunk, after second chunk, we want to, you know, upgrade the line of credit before I hit zero so I can maximize time. Does that make sense, guys? I really want to maximize my time. Because if I do not upgrade the personal line of credit, that car loan, right? So if it took me roughly three, four months to pay off the first 12K, it should be roughly the same amount the next three, four months. So January, February, March, right? Say I'm in April, worst case scenario. By April or sooner, that line of credit's at zero. Well. 584.97 for January, February, March. That's another three more payments. That means the balance on the car is going to be in the 8,000 range. There's really no interest left on that car loan. So you know what would make sense actually? To do debt snowball if I do not upgrade the credit line. Because when you look at, okay, if, if they chunked, the remaining eight grand, 5.14%, and they shifted it to 13%, they would actually pay more in interest. Now, in a way, we could kind of manipulate the number with the use of the credit card, but why go through the trouble? Why not just keep using the credit card to run bills, get the cash back, and then just do debt snowball on the remaining of that car loan until I can upgrade the line of credit. So, reminder, if the person, this kingdom citizen, does not upgrade their line of credit before hitting zero on the second chunk by next year, 2021, we're just going to do debt snowball. $4,500 goes towards the car. $4,500 plus $584.97 that's $5,084.97 that's going to the car loan. It's literally going to take 1.5 months to remove the car and I get the cash flow. Does that make sense, guys? So when you're dealing with P-locks and, and amortization, um, it usually makes the most sense if you have a higher interest rate on your debt tool compared to a very low amortized loan. You want to make sure that you're at the beginning of that loan, not the end. If you're at the end, it probably will not make sense. You'll probably just want to stick to debt snowball and using credit cards to get cash back rewards to kind of speed up the process a little bit more. Hope, hopefully that makes sense to you guys. All right. So we like debt snowball. We're not against it. We just know that there's more effective ways to go about it. And then we want to implement debt snowball when it's necessary. Here is a situation where that snowball becomes necessary for about two months. Now, once the line of credit gets upgraded, let's say we go from a 13 down to like a six, seven, eight, you know, anything less than 13, anything less than 10 would be fantastic. And then a higher credit line would be great because the Fed loan by 2021 April-ish paying $629.92 a month, you would agree that the balance is going to be roughly around $20,000 owed, right? And so if I'm able to get a, say, a $30,000 line of credit, I'll be very tempted to chunk the entire debt and shift it 
to a line of credit, say, at like a 6% rate or 8% rate because 6%, 7%, 8% is not really 8%. We're not going to actually get charged that amount because then we redirect the 629.92. Our cash flow is well over $5,500 at that point, right? Our third chunk. And we're making strides, strides, okay? So that is like the initial stages of velocity banking. This is what it looks like when you do it correctly, when you run the numbers. Here's the template, ladies and gentlemen, the template. You take this template, you apply it to your finances, you know your numbers, you run your numbers, you know everything before you make a move. Cut all the guessing work out of it. You put yourself in a very good position.